at another geo here. Um, I just I actually got done with the split system geo, um, and it was a uh, very very dirty filter. If I can get the picture up here, I'll show you guys. It um, uh, the homeowner's with me the whole time, so I couldn't get any video at all. So, um, but this is pretty interesting. Um, so we've been talking about geothermals. Um, geothermals can do all kinds of things. Now here is a good case in point. This is one I sold this unit. Uh, I did not put it in, but I sold it. This is um, let's see here. Where is that made? Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> so this is a water furnace. Um, this here, like I was talking about, is a special made. Um, anytime you find a water furnace that has a work order number on it, that means it's a, uh, a custom built. So, what this is, it's about five foot tall, I guess. Um, this is a 12 ton water to water geothermal. So, water to water, meaning, um, it's all it's doing is heating water, no air. So it has two different exchangers in there. Basically your condenser side and your evaporator side. And it's heating water. We're storing some water here. That's a 80 gallon tank. Um, now I'll get back to this one here in a second, the reason why I'm actually here. Um, this thing one and a half gallons per ton okay there's my water source in and out this thing runs 18 gallons a minute when it's running okay here's my load water load water being the water we're using this is a car wash by the way just uh it kind of seems ridiculous all this water You're like what the heck are they doing with it <laughs> It's car wash. So, um, this is storage tank and storage tank only. Backup water here. Now, which brings me to why I was called here. I don't know if you can see how everything is just soaked and wet in here. Just wet, wet, wet. Okay. I came and found this tea is kind of open. I'm like, what is going on here? <clears throat> this is just so weird that I gotta <laughs> gotta share this with you. This was still, this is what was screwed in up there. And here is what's left of the pressure tank that blew completely apart. <laughs> it's not, it's not laying on the ground. Fitting goes here blew out this whole thing blew out I bent this top back you can see how that it bent back and put a dent right here when this top just blew completely back the air pressure the bladder's still good um, the air pressure was only 12 psi you know, right where it's supposed to be and this one was replaced last year I remember replacing this last summer the old one lost its air pressure and it was leaking water, um, so we screwed this new one on. So I'm going to take it back <laughs> and get another one and get that put on. But um, so I guess anybody that wanted to see the inside of a bladder tank, here you go. Just a big balloon. That side's all full of air. Now this thing doesn't actually go all the way. It's not just a solid balloon all the way around. This goes in. I don't know how far it goes in. It might even be right here. And it seals in here, so it's metal on this bottom side and then the, the rubber on this side and the, the rubber. So you got your water coming through here, right to here. And as you, you know, it pushes and comes back, you know, and that's what keeps your, helps keep your pressure up. I guess it does have a hole in it. So you just got your water pressure against that, so they don't actually hold too much water. But it looks like this thing's been leaking for a while, and apparently nobody noticed it. 
and then she blew her top. Oh, I don't know if how many of you guys ever deal with any of this stuff? That is just wild. Pro Flex 2 Hydronic Expansion Tank. Not for use on potable water. That's fine. Yeah, when I first checked it, it was still 12 psi, but it obviously has a hole in it, so maybe when I was screwing around with it and Ben's lid, I probably popped it. You know, we're not exceeding any of this. Our, our working pressure is around 45 psi, and the outlet on that is 120 degrees. So we're well within. So ah, I found the problem. Bingo. Made. Yep. It's not what. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna go get that, and I'll be right back, and we're gonna put that guy in. I'll show you the rest of the uh, car wash, at least the inner workings of it. So there's my water furnace geothermal backup. And then I got a backup to the backup in here. Um, chemical tanks, water softener, brine tank. And these are the actual units that run the um, actual car wash system. Turns what jets on, makes the roller go back and forth, turns the blower on, blah, blah, blah. So, there's the control panel for it. And there's the backup to the backup. And this thing, it shows you a little bit about the chemicals that are in here. This thing is three years old. And look how much rust that thing has on it. And, you know, they keep all those chemicals in here. And Yikes. There's another Takagi. That's for domestic. They also have a dog wash here uh, on the other side. So I think that's what the, uh, like, that little water heater is for. And it also does domestic for the bathrooms and whatnot. So, oh, yeah, I failed to mention... Uh, back to the Geo, that thing is a, has two compressors, and it is a three-phase unit. It's a 240-volt three-phase dual compressor, first and, first and second stage, so. But we're going to be in and out of here. There, there's some work that we're getting ready to do in here, so if you guys got any questions on this, or you'd like me to do a little bit more, um, I just don't know how familiar you guys are with geos or not. Uh, if you guys would like to see the exchangers or you got any questions on how any of that works, I'd be glad to share what I know about it. So, 12 ton water to water. Okay, thanks guys. Have a great day.